Hey guys, <laughs> and we're back live with our awesome new uh, guest, Ben Goretzky. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. He like is it. the uh, CEO of 3D Retro, which is an awesome collectibles uh, toy shop in sunny Burbank, California. Thank you. And he's also the founder of DesignerCon, which biasly is one I think the probably the best art focused uh, cons that are out right now. Thanks. Thanks. In the US. Oh, there you go. There you well, go. the artists make it so cool. And, you know, you make it great for the I'm artists. Not to freak you out. Yes. This place is creepy. <laughs> There's like guys walking around in Pennywise costumes out here. I believe that you might be one of the people who don't like clowns too I much. I hate clowns. You came on the perfect day. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I hear. So, but thanks for having me. Well, yeah. thanks for coming down. Uh, is this First time been to Sideshow? Or? I have been to Sideshow uh, once before. Awesome, okay. So it's it's good to be back. It's the first awesome time on the show, see. right? First time on the show. This yes. This is very cool. This high budget. Yeah, uh, you guys have a show? studio. It's nice, it's, it's very nice, yeah. yeah like people um, actually working behind the cameras. I know, man. There's like one person. There's like, like a budget bunch. involved, isn't there? It's crazy, yeah. <laughs> it's insane. Um, but thanks for coming. Uh, you guys at home, if you want to send in some uh, questions, uh, shoot them on over, and we'll uh, ask Ben some questions too. Um, I know you're busy, and thank you for taking some time yeah, to come no here. Um, but if you go to side.show slash decon giveaway, you will have a chance to win a pretty cool prize. Yeah, we were actually uh, teaming up with you guys to give away uh, some VIP tickets Ooh. to DesignerCon. Uh, for those who haven't been, hopefully, you know, this is your chance to go. At, uh, so the tickets will come with uh, VIP shirts, like this oh, one from last year. Nice. And um, I believe you guys are throwing in something into the package. I believe well. we're throwing in a, the Comic-Con exclusive a, a gold metallic Thanos, yes. Mad Titan figure. So that's, that's awesome. a great little package. Shirt, tickets, yeah. and an Unruly uh, toy. Yeah, because you guys are going to be there. You I guys... believe Unruly will be there this year, so oh, yeah. it'll be pretty fun. Um, I'll be at the booth, hanging out, talking to artists, you know. Maybe promoted some stuff. I don't know. We'll see. Which should yeah. be fun. Um, and then also, during this uh, little interview we have, mm -hmm. you, Ben, can choose if someone gives us a good question to give away some free goodies. Yeah, we brought some uh, giveaways just for the live audience, for all mm -hmm. of you good peoples out there watching on the internet. The internet. The, the interwebs, internet. yes. The interwebs. So we're going to oh. be giving some of this away. A pin, a little bear brick. Yeah, we have a Chevy Metal bear brick, which was uh, exclusive uh, last year. That's the VIP pin from last year. And then we have a uh, Decon shirt as well here. Nice. Maybe, oh. maybe if somebody can name the artist of the shirt, we'll, we'll get oh, one of those Oh, that's a good trivia. That's there a good one. Go. Yeah. So if you know the artist who designed this shirt, that's from last year's Decon, Yeah, right? maybe uh, the first one to tell us who designed it. First one to tell it. This is yours. So, so that's great. Um, well, Ben, again. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Uh, let's start off with a good question here. Okay. Um, what is uh, what are your fandoms like? What do you geek out about <laughs> besides designer toys? Um, and I think I might know the answer. I think you already <laughs> know the answer because um, I've, I've talked to you about one of the pieces that you previously designed. My biggest fandom is Back to the Future. Yes. Yeah. I I don't know what it is. I think it's because I saw the first film when I was five. Wow. And I just it just stuck. And of course, I had to wait until about nine or ten for mm -hmm. the second one to come out. As a five-year-old, that totally sucks. You watch the movie, and then it's like, "To be continued." Yep. And I'm like, "Where's the rest? Yeah. <laughs> what happens, Doc? Marty? What happens?" So, um, yeah. So growing up uh, with that movie, and of course the car, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm a huge Back to the Future fan. I collect Back to the Future art. I collect Back to the Future figures. I have a DeLorean. It's kind is it of running? Ins yeah, of course. Right. There you it go. There works. you go. There you You'll go. See me take it around town, and but you don't have it. it. You don't have it souped up like to look like. The, okay, yeah. I have enough friends in there the DeLorean go. community. There you go. That uh, have the car souped up. So if I need to fill that void in my life, I have friends that can awesome. help me with that. You must have hated it because I hated it at the end of Back to the Future Two, where they showed you clips of Back to the Future Three, and you. I for a split second, I remember as a kid thinking, "Oh my God, we're gonna watch the rest of it now." And then I just loved stopped. it. I hated it. It pissed me off. I was like, no. no I loved it because I didn't have to wait another five years. It's like, oh, good. They're finally doing this. That's a good point. Good point. So, yeah, it was it was good. It was good on their part. Like, kind of telling people, like, you won't have to wait forever, folks. There's going to be another one coming soon. Well, let me ask you this. I asked this of all my Back to the Future fans also. 
Do you want them to do a four? No, don't touch the movie, please. Exactly. Don't. Please. Exactly. Don't touch it. Don't don't kill my childhood and exactly. my fandom. So, I almost yeah. go ballistic when someone's like, yeah, do a four, do a reboot. It's like, you're out of your mind. Yeah, there was a whole speculation about a reboot, and I was like, no, because they're like, oh, we're going to get this car company to yep. do the new car, and we're going to get this new actor to, no, please don't. Don't kill the movie. It's one of those American classic movies, all three of them, that you just can't touch. Right. You don't, you don't need to add on. The story started and ended and, and ended perfectly. Next year is the 35th anniversary. Do you, just out of curiosity, do you have anything planned for that? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So people that go to Decon will find out a little bit about what we're doing for 2020. Nice. And um, we're working on some pretty cool stuff. That oh, is yeah. pretty amazing. Oh, there you go. Yeah. There you go. A little bit of a inside info about Decon and what uh, what Decon's got going on for 2020. So we'll leave it at that for now. Okay. Yeah. But that is a good segue. Thank you. Um, let's talk about what you, my friend, are an expert at: designer toys. I, I'm the expert. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> sure. I'll go with that. Let's start with like the basic question that everybody's asked. That everybody always asks a designer toy collector: How did you get your start collecting designer toys? I actually got my start. Um, Funny story, I went to Comic-Con. Oh, where? It was, I think, 2001, and um, it was actually the Tower Records booth. Mm. Everyone remember Tower Records? Yep. So Tower Records um, had this section in their booth where they were selling these toys out of Hong Kong, designer vinyl, mm -hmm. and I was like, wow, these are, these are so cool. Like, the concept was, it's the same shape, but then they got artists to paint them different designs, and it was like these collectible figures. And I'm like, oh wow! And they came in big sizes and little sizes. And then I said, you know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go when I get back home. I'm gonna go to Tower Records and see what else they have. Mm -hmm. So I went to the one on Sunset. Yep. And uh, if you live in LA, you know what I'm talking about. And um, they had these other vinyl figures. They had figures from Gary Baseman and Tim Biscup, like old school. Yeah. And I remember just picking up these little blind boxes, and I'm like, what do you mean you don't know what's inside? So um, that, that was like the whole introduction to me, and then I just got hooked, and I'm like, I need more. It was crazy, yeah, because back then, Tower Records was like the, the hot spot to pick up designer yeah. toys before most people. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they sold collectible figures. They sold designer toys. They... They saw a lot of stuff back then. What would you say is the uh, part? Two parts. What is the the piece in your collection that was the hardest to get? Hardest to get. Okay. And then the follow up would be: What is the most expensive piece that you own? Oh man! That you had to pay for, huh. and then has then to pay for you. Oh, yeah, this is going to sound for. so like cliche, uh -huh. uh, but yeah, one of the most expensive pieces. I had to pay for was my four foot cause. Oh, nice. Yeah, at, but mm -hmm. nothing compared to what people are paying for it now because I actually got it from his website when it was released. That was a $4,000 toy. But it's beautiful. It's it beautiful. is a beautiful piece. And yeah. the fact that it's like selling now for over $200,000. Yeah. So, but back then it was like four grand. I'm like, oh, what did I just do? <laughs> so that was like probably the most expensive. The mo the hardest one that I've ever got, I think, ooh, I think back in the day it was like some of the early, like um, maybe Joe Ledbetter stuff. Like okay. When his stuff first hit the market, it was like, how do I get Mr. Bunny? Or yeah, how do yeah, I get yeah. Firecat. And so those were... Um, really hard to come by on some of the early Ron English stuff too. Oh yeah. So yeah, it's, uh, but now I get things so much easier. Because <laughs> there's designer con where I can just go to the show and buy all this stuff. I mean, there's a little bit of privilege that you get for doing that stuff, and that's great. I mean, there's a little bit a of- A little bit. I, I get to, so, like last year it was actually pretty hard for me to shop the floor because it was our first year in Anaheim. It was mm. so big and we were just so busy uh, that I actually didn't really get to shop the floor. But um, there's so much stuff to look at and so much stuff that is available because we have so many international vendors now mm -hmm. and so many other companies that are involved in, I mean, people are bringing it. Like, we used to convince people, like, can you guys bring an exclusive to the show, maybe one? Yeah. And now all the big guys are like, we're releasing everything at, at your show. We're saving the best for your show. It's like, yes. Well, I mean, that, thank you. That's a good segue because this coming year will be the 13th. 
anniversary? This is going to be the 14th. Oh, 14th, sorry, 14th. 14th year for us. Yeah. Next year is going to be our 15th anniversary. Um, yeah, and, uh, you know, the show started, the show actually started as Vinyl Toy Network, and then yep. we had to we had change that. the name to DesignerCon because we were more than just vinyl toys. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually started in an 1,100 square foot room. A small little basement area in Pasadena. Small Pasadena's. little conference yep. room in Pasadena. Yeah. And last year we hit uh, 350,000 square feet with over 700 vendors, most wow. of them artists. Uh, we still lar largely independent artists, but, you know, like um, some of the larger toy manufacturers from all over the world. Mm -hmm. So it was great. It was a lot of fun. I mean, that's what I always tell, like, uh, when I, because I've, had a booth at designer con for the yeah. past i don't know how many years i remember and I uh, from you. there you go and then it's one of those things where like other artists upper up and coming artists independent artists will come into me and ask about like you know how i got my start or whatnot and this and that and like basically asking like is designer con a convention that i should do when mm -hmm. no one knows who i am and i told them like it is because it's probably the best convention that um an independent artist can showcase their work yep and the audience is so open to all types of art yeah. That eventually, someone in that audience is going to, you know, be attracted and drawn to your work. Where they're going to, you'll find your audience there. Yeah, there's something for every. I always tell people like, like, should I come to Decon or like, will I have fun at Decon? Do they have stuff there for me? There's something for everyone. Yep. You know, whether you like the cute stuff or the really creepy clowns, there's really <laughs> something there for everyone. Uh, so it's it's great variety. Yeah, great variety for people to buy, great variety for someone to showcase their work. And, and you're, great networking. Yes, exactly. That's what I was yeah. like, you're around other fellow artists who are just as encouraging, who are just out there to grind and hustle also and get their stuff out there. And like networking, like um, I myself have met like other clients because I have friends yeah. like, that have come to the show and asked me about work and whatnot. I actually met Greg from Sideshow at DesignerCon. He came to my booth like on a Sunday when it was about to shut down. And, like that's how I met him. That's um, awesome. But that's, that's so the cool. great thing about DesignerCon. So yes, DesignerCon. If you're a young artist, up and coming artist, do DesignerCon. Or if you just want to check the artists out. Or check artists out. Yeah. Go to DesignerCon. So many talented people there. Um, speaking of talented people, besides founding uh, Decon and then having 3D Retro the shop, you wear other hats, as in like producing toys, right? Yes. So can you talk more about like that? Like you know, what else do you do? Yeah. In so that realm? Uh, 3D Retro, we're not just uh, a shop which you know we sell a lot of these products that you guys see here uh, but we actually produce our own vinyl figures um, we don't do a lot because we're independent so but yeah ever so often I'll find an artist that I really like mm -hmm. and I'll approach him and I'll be like hey have you ever thought about doing 3d figures featuring your artwork and a lot of them are very open to the idea and we produce limited edition vinyls at 3d retro for like an upcoming artist uh, what do you look for for to collaborate with an artist on a project? Honestly, this is probably the the wrong thing, but I for me it's just like wow, I really like your art, and I really think it'll convert well into three D. There's yeah. a lot of artists that I love their art, and I'm like, there's no way yeah. that this is going to convert well into three D. Yeah. Um, but there's some where it's like they have specific characters that they've been using over and over again, or they made this one piece which is really popular among collectors in terms of two-dimensional art mm -hmm. and I'm like we gotta turn that into 3d so yeah it's, for me <laughs> it's more about like I really like this and I want to make it into 3d which is probably a really bad business decision <laughs> uh, but sometimes it works out and there's enough people and enough collectors out there that agree with me mm -hmm. and buy the figure and uh, it works out really well and it's one of those things, too, where, like, I love how you, you base it on, like, what you think, you know, what art you like. Yeah. And it just basically can open up eyes to people who have never know, knew about that artist and, you know, that artist's uh, style and what they do. So, like, you doing that and helping propel that artist out there right. gets people to know more about that person and their stuff. And that's yeah. great, man. I mean, it feels like that's what designer toys has always been about. Exactly. That's that's what I feel. Yeah. So, and, I mean, it's, it's not to say that some of the artists that we work with aren't already big. Yeah. Like, but um, but yeah, we I like to find new talent like that, and there's always somebody out there so cool. Is there? I mean, can you give us like a rundown of the people you worked with already, and then what you might have coming out uh, that you can talk about? That we can't talk. Yeah, but we'll, no. you know, there's 
There's what only three people here, so <laughs> our studio forget audience it. is huge, man. I don't know what I'm talking about. Forget about the the live people watching. Uh, but we've worked with um, like our, my the very first vinyl figure that I ever made was with an artist by the name of Ragnar, which I still love Ragnar. all his stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, we've worked with uh, Gary Baseman, we've worked with Greg Simpkins, we worked with Jim of Food, we've worked with Matt Graves, um, Nathan Hamill, Nathan Oda. Um, Jeremy Fish, um, oh gosh, I'm probably forgetting a ton of people, uh, but um, yeah, there's there's a lot. We worked with Brandy Milne, um, trying to go through the roster of some of these, the older figures that we did, but a lot of artists, That's a lot a, of yeah. great names. And a lot of great names, a lot of people who probably like at that point, if they weren't big already, yeah, have like moved on and like I'm not moved on, but like have just blown up since right. then. Yeah. So and last right. year we actually went into licensed yes, art figures. So right. we had uh, Austrian artist Nichos, we had Joe Ledbetter, uh, and we had uh, Juan Muniz design Jurassic Park limited edition artist figures, which was really cool. And that was great because that was there was a that was kind of like the a theme in a sense. Or there was an art show that there was, was yeah, yeah, it was the 25th anniversary yep. of the movie. Way to make us feel old, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, it was the 25th anniversary, and we brought in a 37 foot T Rex. That thing was awesome. Uh, was right. sanctioned sanctioned by Universal. Yep. Uh, to the art show, and um, it was great. It was fantastic. So, in terms of the question, what are we working on for 2020? Mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be a lot of Back to the Future things hmm, going on, maybe possibly with some other artist that's sitting right there, and um, there's going to be, of course, probably an art show at the <gasps> at Decon, and um, then we're also working on some stuff with another student, which I really can't talk Ooh, about. Ooh, secret um, stuff. I like that. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's going to be really cool. It's going to be a celebration of the Founders... If you can guess, the founders, the founders studio. I can't say much. I, I, this is for next year. This is for next year. Along with yeah, the back, wow. Along okay. with the back to the future oh, stuff, okay. we're, All right. we're working on some I'm think really about that. cool stuff. Think about that. And my assistant is probably sit, sitting over there going like, "What are you doing? <laughs> we cannot talk about any of this stuff." But it's going to be so cool, and people are going to love it. Well, we got some questions from the audience out there, so thanks okay. for sending them in, guys. Uh, we got one from Jamie Dewberry. Ben, what is your favorite collectible uh, that you have personally? Your oh, favorite. My favorite collectible? That's hard. Mm -hmm. That's so hard. Um, oh, God. Um, it's like picking your favorite child. Yeah. Yeah. You can't, can't really do that. Um, or at least you don't tell people in public. <laughs> What? What? Um, <laughs> I get. I don't know. I mean, I have the the. I have so many and it, like so many Back to the Future things too. Yep. Um. So. I don't know. Uh, my life size DeLorean. That's my favorite collectible. Thing. I yeah. mean, growing up, that was like, oh my god, oh, I gotta get a DeLorean. Yeah. Get pretty a DeLorean. much. Yeah. So it, it. Yeah, probably that. But then, if we're talking about toys, maybe my one six scale. Hot Toys DeLorean. Oh, yeah. That thing is huge. And it's awesome. It is. Okay. So as we go through these questions too, Ben, like if you feel as if like one question is like, you know, stands out above the rest. Sure. We've got prizes. Yeah, we actually right. have some pins. So okay. maybe maybe people that uh, ask, ask a really good question, like... We have a guess here. Uh, a guest. A guess about uh, who did, who the artist was for this t-shirt. And it's from Eric Tong. Uh-huh. Or Tong. And he's wondering, is the designer for the shirt Mr. Lester? The Lister. No, Ooh. it is not Lister. Keep guessing. Keep, Keep guessing. guessing. Nice try, Eric. Nice try. That if you if you know the uh, the main character there, the the three eyed rabbit right, there. Should we open it? Can we open it? Yeah, go ahead. Right. So we, we can we get actually, a better look at the shirt. Yeah. So don't so, worry, guys. This is like the shirt we're giving away, and no one's worn it, but we did take it out of the bag. Right. But I might wear it later. Um, we, we've got more. We got more. Oh, we got more. Okay, so this is the full graphic. Gives you a better idea, maybe, yeah. of who the artist is. Because uh, it's uh, pretty much some of his iconic characters on there. All right. So keep guessing, keep guessing. Uh, we have another question from Joe Lombardo. Ben. Yeah. How do you decide on the logo for each year's designer con? Oh. Uh, the Space Vader guy with the pew pews this year is fun. That's awesome. That's <laughs> a good question. That guy deserves uh, Ooh. a free uh, 
free pen for him, or maybe a bear would give him. There you um, go, Joe, Joe Lombardo. You got a so pen, my friend. So it's funny because we actually come up with a theme the year before. Mm -hmm. um, last year, last year the theme was rock and roll, and the reason why we actually came up with that was because we had um, a rock and roll uh, after party. Oh, that's right. Yeah, with um, um, Chevy Metal playing, which if you don't know, it's pretty much the Foo Fighters. Um, <laughs> you couldn't tell anybody that year last year, right? They just had to no, show up we, and know, we, right? No, we couldn't tell. Like, we announced that it was Chevy Metal, but yeah. it's like only people that really know who Chevy Metal is yeah. like, could tell, like, oh my gosh, how did you guys get Chevy Metal? So, last year we themed it rock and roll. This year we were like, it was like, well, what are we going to theme it for 2018? Oh, you know, we're right across the street from Disneyland. Didn't they just, aren't they opening up Star Wars land? Oh, yeah, Galaxy's yep. Edge. Yep. And so we were like, why don't we theme it just space in general? And so we're like, okay, we're going to theme 2019 space. And it just seems like it was perfect because I guess the moon landing anniversary this year oh, yeah. happened. And there's so many things happening in terms of like space and NASA and all that stuff. And we're like, wow, we, we hit a pretty good theme. And then... Uh, we kind of, I guess, we kind of just look at like what's going to be happening the following year, or what's going to be involved, like whether it's the art show, or whether we're going to have a special guest, or yeah. or whether the after party is theme, which is why we theme the show that way. And it's a thin theme, <laughs> uh, you know. It's like you're really, a blanketed theme, yeah, kind yeah. of a blanketed theme. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, we kind of theme our mascots for that. And then I don't have to tell you, 2020 mm -hmm. is going to be themed. Back to the Future, so we're gonna have some watch as our mascot gets converted into <laughs> maybe Doc. Because Ooh, yeah, that'd be a good. One. That would be kind of cool because I think we did him. We had one year where we did the eighties. That's right, yeah. And he was he was pretty much dressed up as Marty. Yeah, so Doc so, would be nice. You so, could pay those up then, like if you got that pin from that year. Oh yeah, and you could pair him up with the one. Oh, for that's next a great year. idea. I know. Giving out ideas, people. There you go. There you go. <laughs> A time travel gimmick? Time travel gimmick. Time travel, there you go. Oh, there's so many good travel. time travel movies. That would be good being time travel, yeah. Yeah, but... Quick, what's your favorite time travel movie besides Back to the Future? Um, uh, George George Orwell's Time Machine? Time Machine, time machine? Okay. The, But the original one from like the 1960s. Not the other one with Guy No, Davis. not the other okay, one. Yeah. Like, I love the old one with those creepy like... Yeah. You know, like, not... Yeah. That one was on with the wheel thing. It was yeah. just so cool. I will say that my guilty pleasure for a time travel movie, uh -huh. and I always watch it when it's on, is The Time Traveler's Wife. Time Traveler's Wife. Yes. It's, it's like a weird movie, but my wife loves that movie. And whenever it's on, I have to watch it. Because whenever there's a time travel themed movie on, I have to watch it. It's ridiculous. Say, guilty pleasure for being? Yes. Time Travel? Time Cop? Oh, Time Cop. Time, time Cop. Time Cop. Yeah. It is... Like uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme at his like peak, yeah, because he has mullet Van Damme, and the scene where he jumps on the counter and does the splits is just so like unnecessary. It's like I don't get it. It's, so good. it's <laughs> unnecessary, but it's, it's classic Jean-Claude Van Damme. I love it. Awesome. Um, we have another great uh, question from our fans, Audrey D. Uh -huh. uh, ben, what are some big name vendors we have for Decon this year to look forward to? It's a good question. Oh, okay. So you'll get the entire list probably within. The next week because we're going to be releasing the map and layout one of the big new vendors we have coming this year is this uh, company called unruly i've heard of them yeah they they've familiar. got some pretty cool uh <laughs> vinyl figures coming out um but um aside from those guys yep. uh we also have uh, metacom coming back nice uh we have um a new sponsor and vendor coming to us extra large oh wow yeah nice. the clothing company uh, from also, from Japan, Japan, extra large. Yeah, extra oh, awesome, large. Yeah. Nice. So, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. We also have Super Plastic Ooh, coming this year. Nice. So, uh, shout out Hukji. Yeah, Hukji and Paul are coming out, and uh, you'll be able to get your janky toys from them. Nice. And um, there's a few more. There's a few other good ones. So but, a lot of good surprises then. Oh yeah. Nice. Yeah. So and if you're a fan of Star Wars. Sticking with this whole space theme, wow. we have a big announcement which we'll be making probably in the next couple of weeks that you don't want to miss. 
So you be. basically are announced that you know who Ray's parents are. Uh, <laughs> no, but it's going to be better than that. Better than that? Okay, it's better. It's going to be so much better than that. Better than them being normal traitors or whatever they were? No. Okay, all right, good. That's awesome. All right. Um, oh, this is a good question from okay. Pop Culture Asylum. Do you own a pair of the Nike Mags? I don't. That's a, I am surprised. I know, I know. So, first of all, there's the 2015 ones, and then there's, like, the earlier ones. There's, like, the self-lacing, yep. the non-self-lacing. Yep. And uh, the ones I, I'm, I'm guessing they're talking about is the one that was, like, um, with the Michael J. Fox Society. Mm -hmm. And I just, I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't spend, like... 15 grand on a pair of shoes. And I'm like, <laughs> I just I just can't as much as I I love it and I would love to have one. Uh, but um, <laughs> uh, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't spend that money. But maybe one day, who knows? Like no, I totally agree. Like I, the way they did it was great. It was for a good cause. Yeah, where, like, all the proceeds went to Michael J. Fox's uh, uh, foundation, and they did everything through eBay. So it was all yeah. like eBay auctions. And much like you, I looked at it and I saw, I remember seeing the lowest bid was like five grand. Yeah. And in my mind, I was trying to justify, I could pay five grand for a pair of shoes. This all makes sense. Yeah. Five grand would have been borderline like, what, yeah. did, I, what did I just do? But it's okay. <laughs> uh, but nothing, nothing close for five grand. I, I mean, I think the lowest ones went for like maybe ten or $12,000. Yeah. And it's just, I just... And that was like the first auction, right? Like the second auction where they're actually auto lacing. Went, were they even more? Higher, yeah, even yeah. higher. I think yeah. Yeah, I was just. Uh, oh yeah. Good. yeah. Okay. As much as I would love to, but yeah, my wife would kill me. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, so those are uh, some great questions. Yeah. Maybe we'll figure out later on. I think we should give everybody, yeah. everybody that asked a question. I, 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 we have enough pins and bear Ooh. bricks. We can definitely give, uh, give all those people that just asked those great questions. Well, there you Those go, guys. Giveaways. Everybody asks a question. You're getting a prize. You're getting a pin. You're getting a pin. Everybody You're getting a pin. Everybody, look underneath your chair. There's a pin. There's only two of us Everybody here. Everybody at home, pin. literally, look underneath your chair. There's, that'd be there's a great no pin there. That'd be great that picture. would be amazing, yeah. but... But, like, and then who... Might as well tell everybody, who designed this shirt? So this t-shirt was designed by Ron English. There you go, guys. Yeah, Ron and English. if you don't know Ron English, then you should. He's pretty amazing. Uh, he's got a whole brand called Propaganda. Like, Propaganda? Again, again. There you go. Shout out Ron so, English. Uh, yeah, so he designed that shirt for us, but we'll figure out someone to, to give this to also. Oh yeah, so, yeah. You know, we'll give that shirt out too. Um, thanks for coming out, Ben. Hey, I mean, no it's great. thanks for having me. Is there anything else you want to promote before uh, you leave? Besides, Dico, 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 Dico. Um, no, yeah, just uh, visit uh, designercon.com for information and just uh, kind of keep an eye out because literally the next in the next thirty days. We're going to be announcing so much cool stuff. It's ridiculous. And, um, yeah. And, and mean, visit the store, right? Yeah, visit, Retro. visit 3D Retro in uh, beautiful Burbank adjacent Glendale. It's funny, like, <laughs> it's, 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 li it's Glendale, technically. Okay, because I would say Burbank, but it's... I know. You, you literally, we are literally one block okay. out from uh, Burbank. Oh, okay, I gotcha. So gotcha. we always say Burbank adjacent. <laughs> so it's... Awful. But, it, it's yeah. a great, you know, again, biasly, it's a great shop to visit. Uh, a lot of cool stuff there. You end up spending a lot of money, people. A lot of money. And the murals. Oh, yeah, and the murals, the murals. Beautiful murals out yeah. in the parking lot they got from a lot of great artists. Um, what, who, did you do one recently? Another one? We uh, we just got, uh, there's an artist by the name of Jerk Face. There that, you go. <laughs> that did, uh, did a mural for us. And then um, we uh, recently finished up. A uh, mural with uh, Persuay, and we have murals by, from Tristan yep. and Jason Naylor. And Shout out Tristan Eden. Yeah, a lot of good stuff to look at. Lots right of good stuff. And uh, Buff Monster, that was the latest one. Too. Oh, yeah, Buff Monster. Yeah. Well, thanks again, Ben. Hey, thanks for having me. Follow Ben on uh, Instagram at DesignerCon. Yes. Also, so that way you can find all the cool info and super uh, secretive stuff that you can talk about now that he'll announce soon. Soon. Soon mm -hmm. on his Instagram and uh, social media stuff. Uh, thanks again, Ben. Hey, did you like that video? Be sure to subscribe by clicking the S icon on your screen and click that bell icon to be notified whenever a new video is posted. If you'd like more info on the items featured in this video, click the link provided under Product Info. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to let your geek side show.